following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Blowing out of the backfield, exploding down the sideline. This is Hanging with the Boys, presented by Wingstop, where flavor gets its wings. Now, your hosts, Nate Newton, Kurt Daniels, Jesse Holly, and Shannon Gross. Shannon Thursday, welcome to the show. You are looking live at Tostitos Championship Plaza at Let's the Star go. in Frisco, Texas. It is a it is a warm 87 degrees. It feels like 95. The high today is going to be 96. The low tonight will be 76. And we are live from the SWBC Mortgage Studio. Inside the star, where it's probably about 70 degrees, and we got the band back together. Nate decided yeah. to not big time ah, us today and join the show. So, before we get started, we now we know why he had the fresh cut. Yeah, oh, oh yeah. the other day, yeah. he was like, looking fresh, bro. He can't, he can't, he can't get clean for us, but you can get clean for John. How did it go? How was it? It, it was great, but. It, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys something. When I leave the show, man, and then I get a bunch of texts about some hard knocks, y'all, I said, okay, I've never watched hard knocks. And I had to watch hard knocks. Were you on it? No, nah, I, I hate hard knocks. <laughs> hard knocks is a glorified fourth and long. Whoa. That's what that is. So you hate fourth and long? He, he just I loved, loved what Mike did and you did. You loved the but check. Now, yeah, I loved it. But now <laughs> I, I'm watching all these fourth and long guys. We got the one and only fourth and long. The only. The rest of yeah. these guys is just follow ups. If you if Mike would have just branded that and kept that, th- this all this is hard knocks. I'm looking at hard knocks. Okay, we could still be making money right now. Yeah, uh. you could still be the Turk. I would have stepped in as another in another role. I would stepped in for Coach Avazano's role. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But the man things were great was great, but I, I kept getting them the texts where y'all was texting one another. Oh, uh, uh, players want to be winners. Oh, I can tell how they want to be winners. Not off hard knocks. No. My wife tried to kiss me. And I'm pushing. Why are you pushing me away? Cause you they force you to watch hard knocks. Yeah. <laughs> Don't Y'all be blaming quit us watching for you hard not kissing your wife. Don't be blaming us. Oh, no, I love for kissing that. on my wife now. I, I do some things. <laughs> 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 we don't have to know all that. Jesus. Oh, already. already. Yeah. Three minutes into the show already. <laughs> so, Hard Knocks, the drone shot was cool. Yes. Very cool. Jonathan Jackson was cool. Yes. Very cool. Now, now, because I had his dad. I had I had Big Al. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Do you had? I had both the granddad, the, and, gr- the great granddad, the dad, and the, and the, the great granddaddy, the granddaddy, and the daddy. Okay, and oh. I, I got all four generations. I had no ah. idea that, that he was royalty like that. That is, yeah, long yeah, line the, of, yeah, uh, the uh, doctor. Uh, I knew yeah. his dad worked here. He was here. When yeah, I started. Al, but, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I got them all. I got them all, man. That's yeah, crazy. And you can see Al. the resemblance in all of yeah. them. Yeah, you can see the facial uh-huh. resemblance in all of them. Yeah, so. And, and Trayvon's kid was cool. Yeah, but he better start calling his dad. Calling him dad. But his first name. <laughs> yeah, his name. <laughs> I didn't yeah. catch that. My you wife. didn't catch that. <laughs> that was the very first thing that I I called. I'm I was like, like yeah, this is daddy. I had to remind. Yeah. I was like, wait, is that his? Son? Did they say son no, or I nephew? Feel, I, I didn't know what no, it was no. at first. I was like, no, they said son, and he kept calling him by his first name. <laughs> I was like. This don't normally go down like that in the black household now, fellas. <laughs> you call your mother or father by their first name, you you might get a look the first time, but if it's a repeat behavior, you get the you get the backhand of death. Yeah, uh, you get Ooh. you get to get a you get to give a nickname, you know, you know, you know, Big Mama or Big Daddy, or, but not first name like <laughs> Yo Yo Dad, go get me a, 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 a Hey Trayvon, Trayvon, go get, go get me a soda. Got, Tray, was, Trayvon, go get me a soda. Was he saying Trayvon in the, when they're in the house? Yeah, oh, I didn't catch in the house that. and on the field. Well, I knew the field because you were trying to get his attention. I could see that, but I didn't catch it in the house. My, if my son wanted my attention, well, but one person gonna call me Daddy. <laughs> you tend to right. You tend to know. You tend to know your kids. Yeah, well. but it, there's all those right? players. It could be any. Yeah, you know. Uh-huh. You, you know, know your, your kids. You know your kids. Yeah. Hey, hey, right, Kurt, right. Kurt has 
Kurt don't have that problem. Me. He got five kids, so <laughs> I'm trying to defend he can't say just one go call me daddy. He got but you know each one of them cry. Yeah, you yeah, know it, them, when, yeah. when something happened, that, ah, you know which one. Oh, the baby, that's such and such go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh no, daddy. When my son, used to, when I used to run out of the tunnel and all of it, daddy, I looked right at my son Trey. I knew who it was. Mm. All right. I heard a lot of Nate Newtons. <laughs> Nate Newton, Nate Newton. Come on, man. But anyway, that, that's how we do it now. That's how we do it now. But you ain't going to do it in my house. If his kid come to my house, I'm going to say, look here, son. That's daddy. I'm Mr. Newton. That's Mr. Fourth and Long. That's Mr. Beard. And that's the and hey, and that right there is the rock star. I promise you, my I promise you, my kid ain't calling me Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you that. I mean, I you, that. you start equaling your kid up with you when he's a baby. Yeah. Hey, 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 tra- Trayvon, tra- go get go get me a soda. <laughs> Trayvon, I'm hungry. The yeah. thing is, he's he was abbreviating it too. He's like, hey, Trey. Trey. Yeah. Hey, Trey. Yeah, like they was buddies. No, 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 no. Nah, man. You uh, would have nah. been a dust mop at my house because that backhand would have slid you clean cloth. That was the original Roomba right there when you got smacked. <laughs> pie out. Just clean the dust clean out. Cloth the the so, original man. Swiffer. Yeah. By me being so big, it, 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 it was always a stick. <laughs> when you break hands, you hit me. I was so big as a kid. You had to get, this was my you dad. Had, you had to get an accessory. Yeah. Right? <laughs> a brush. A, yeah. a skillet. Something. Huh? I remember one time my mama told me, my mom, my aunt, my mom would butt this tall. And my aunt said, yeah, I had to get on Wayne. I had to get on Dorothy. And I had to really get them, you know, really what really whoop. I had to get my switch. She says, baby, over here, hey, switches, <laughs> switches don't do nothing over there. Because <laughs> my brother Tim, who played in the pro, my sister Sheila, she five, six, five, eight. Wasn't no small ones. <laughs> baby, I got to get my shoe. I got to get my shoe. <laughs> well, fellas, I was out at practice yesterday, mm-hmm. and guess who else was out there? Hard knocks. Throwing, yeah, but throwing the football. Ben DiNucci. I, oh. I am going to oh. take. Cooper Rush, backup quarterback. I, Go to Nooch. I am going to take back everything I said oh two days God. ago <laughs> when I said I was worried about timing and the way that. Dude, Dak hit every. I know it was practice. I know they didn't have pads on. He hit – I don't think he missed a throw. He hit every throw. And what what just completely jumped out to me, because we haven't seen him in, what, three weeks, four weeks, mm-hmm. yeah. and you've all you've seen are the backup guys, the gap between the talent, just the check downs <laughs> and the reads, and right. it's – I mean, you – it's so huge and so apparent when Not he's like on the, the field. Like the 40 mil versus the 300,000. Yeah, like stack, <laughs> hey, exactly. Stack up the ones. Here's the ones and that. And then the ones is on the sixth floor on the other one. Like That, oh, that just, I mean, I, I think you just take for granted when you see that all the time. And it just, it just jumped out and slapped me in the face. And I was just like, like you said, if he goes down, we're screwed. Mm-hmm. Like he, but he, I tell you what, he... He looked good. It didn't look like anything was bothering him. He was doing bootlegs. He was rolling out. He threw the long ball. He threw the checkdowns. Like I, it didn't, it looked like he'd been practicing the yeah. whole time. Did he do all yes. his normal side stuff? As well? <laughs> do what? He did all his normal side stuff as well. Uh, I mean, well, they had that quarterback you or whatever yeah. inside that we don't get to see. Okay. So they usually do their stuff in there when everybody else is out, kind of doing their warm ups and their and their their group stuff. Um, but he came out and he, he he took quite a few reps. He worked. I, I, he probably threw through probably seven to ten times, and he was in you know obviously in a lot more plays with handoffs and things like that. I but man, say that the, he looked good, man. I think the really reporters good. had him twelve pass twelve pass attempts, hit eleven, and the one he missed got batted down at the line. Mm. It yeah. was a blitz from uh, one of the tall safeties. One of the tall safeties, yeah. yeah, jumped up. But I take it back. I'm not worried. No, no, so you're not worried anymore. I am worried. Okay, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm not as worried. I mean, I'm. I. I was. I was concerned. Now I'm just worried. Now, yesterday was it the fact that you saw him? Was it the fact that you saw him throw? Or was it the level of completions that he made? Like, what what was it that took your level? Because when someone has been out a month mm-hmm. and they come back, right, they're going to look a little bit more energized than everybody else because 
I mean, yeah, granted, it's fresh. you're fresh. Mm-hmm. My concern or, or what I will be looking for is what does day two look like? Mm-hmm. What does day three look like? Fatigue a little bit. The maybe. fatigue, right? Mm-hmm. Now, once you get a little bit on your back, what what does do what what is what do those days look like? Yeah. How can we and I know that they're ramping it up slowly but surely. Um today they'll have the uh, 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 Blue scrimmage or something like that, or, or tomorrow game, whatever, game, game, simulation, like simulation yeah. stuff yeah. like mock that. That's what it is. A mock yeah. game. game. I don't yeah. know. They changed the terminology. It's a mock game is a walkthrough. So, so it's a walkthrough. Yeah. So it's a walkthrough. Yeah. So what is he going to do today? Mm-hmm. Right? Are you? Will gonna, they rest him today? Or, will you rest yeah. him today? I think so. Yeah. So. Nah. No. No. You don't think so? And so, and so this is the thing. That, like you get excited for yeah. one day, and I want to see. Well, what happens next? Like right. Can we get two days in a row of twelve to fifteen passes? Do we mm-hmm. get three days in a row of twelve mm-hmm. to fifteen passes? For like, how will this thing break down as we head into September 9th? Fresh, he's going to be fresh. Yesterday was, you know, he's excited, he's happy, and maybe you know, I'm, I'm glad that all the throws were there. Mm-hmm. But now I want to see what is the next phase. Yeah, that he, that'll he lessen my worry. He ready. I okay. mean, you think that, he's going to go out there and throw another 12, 15? Yeah, he he ready. He 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 is ready. Nate is getting into this 16, yeah, 17 yeah, and 0 form. It. I love no, it. No, We're a week away. Ready, man. You okay, get into this 17 and 0 no, with Nate. No, no, don't, form, do me, don't do me like that. Yeah, <laughs> he, buddy. He got to change it this year's one more yeah, game. They yeah. ramped him. They ramped him. He's good. Uh, he's been practicing. We've been seeing before every preseason game he's been throwing. He, he Like you say, Jess, they ramped him, and he's ready. They they went through okay. What is it gonna be back be like after a couple of days of throwing in a row? They done been through that. You you cannot. It's a lot of things that I've been thinking about. You cannot be a week out, uh, two weeks out, and and if they still have that question, something is way wrong with that. If you have that question right now, if you said it's gonna take three weeks, have you called the Rangers, the Astros, and everybody with a pitching staff? To find out how to do this, and everybody agree, and you at that three uh, week mark, then you got a week and a half left, and you asking questions like if, that means something is wrong with Dak. That means that his lower body is not complying to help his upper body, because mm-hmm. that's all the injury is basically from. That's just my assessment. I am not a trainer or a doctor, but most guys, when Dak became who he is, his lower body started connecting with his upper body. And you know as a shooter how much your legs mean to your upper body mm-hmm. as the game go on, as, as you get as you fatigue. And that's where I think Dak kind of just wasn't using his lower body as much as he should have. Even though he out there twisting, pumping, and jumping, he wasn't doing – stop, <laughs> stop. Right? Jesse, stop. <laughs> See, you know what? I'm going to be quiet. Man. That, was a, good, yeah, that yeah. was a good flow, twisting, yeah. pumping, and jumping. That was a good – you yeah. put that word But Dak together. is ready. It, 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 if we get in the next week and, and, and one of those coaches over there, especially Coach McCarthy or Keller Moore, well, we, we still making sure he's right – he ain't gonna never be right. Mm-hmm. What What do you think? We talked about this last show. I mean, I think it was Adam Schefter had said that this is something Dak's gonna deal with all year, the, the, and we were concerned about the main. Not the, he'll be there Sundays, yeah. but the maintenance leading up to that is that gonna affect him? He gonna be all right. I mean, he has that confidence in that because it's one thing to say that you're good down low or, or your shoulder good. It's another thing to do. He he will be all right because. This is about Sundays, and and that maintenance is going to have to be all year. Yeah, but we know – you and I both know the toll that you go through on Sunday. You add an extra game to the year. Yes, sir. If we're already dealing with a quote-unquote maintenance issue, right, where he has mm-hmm. to have a, a pitch count and take days off – as you progress throughout the year, you don't get healthier. No, you, you don't. don't get fresher. You're you're not going to go unsackable. That's right. You're not going to go where you're not hitting the ground. Someone's hitting you, and and you can try. And I was thinking about this on the way in today. You can try to simulate game type scenarios all you want in practice. Mm-hmm. You can't simulate hits on a quarterback in practice. What I mean by that is, is what happens when Dak is going to throw and somebody comes through and he's caught in this position. Mm-hmm. You can't simulate that. What happens then? Mm-hmm. Does that ramp? You know that does that part of the it? ramp up? Or he throws and you know somebody catches or his somebody, arm coming forward. Somebody yeah. he's, he's throwing it. Somebody comes around the back. 
or they, you know, you get sacked from the back and they grab both of your arms, so you literally have nowhere to brace yourself on the way down, and it's shoulder first on the way down, or whatever it is, you go to throw and now your arm hits on top of somebody's helmets and it, it it jerks it back. I mean, there there's no way to to say that's going to be done in practice. But that's with every quarterback. That's going to be with Dak. That's going to be with every quarterback. Right, but every quarterback isn't coming into the season with a shoulder injury. Rodgers? He don't have a shoulder injury. He ha- he had him badly before twice. But he it, don't it, have it this season. But he's still he's just as fragile. Dak has got to get over the mental part. And once he get over the mental part, the physical part going to take care of itself. These are the things that we have to live with. Great conversation. But these are the things that Dak going to have to live with. As he – See, the advantage that these quarterbacks that we are talking about, the advantage they have that most teams don't have is a good good to great offensive line, a nice running back, depending on how you want to play it, some hellacious receivers. So this, that is part of the protection. Now, he's going to get sacked. Some bad plays are going to happen, but – he got to deal with that. He and, got and, to deal with that. And, and I guess we sit on two different sides of the coin because you, you're saying he has to develop and get a little bit more mental, like the mental part of it. I think the dude is already a mentally tough dude. Like I, 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 think, I agree with you on that. I think, I think without a shadow of a doubt, mentally he is not worried about anything. And I, I just I equate that simply to when you've been through enough stuff in your life you build a level of mental toughness. Mm-hmm. Mm, I agree. And, and Dak has been one who we've heard time and time again just so eloquently put things in perspective. Mm. Hmm. And when you talk about the game of football, when it all boils down to it, it's still a child's game. So the, mm. so the mental part about it, I don't think he'll struggle with. I don't, I don't think there's a, there's, a, there's a brain to lower leg what will happen type thing. I think he's through that already. Mm-hmm. But I do think the physical part is something that you have to work out the kinks on. I just do. I, I just think. And, when, and, and when, so when, Mr. Even, Mr. even when you heard. Like Mr. You, Mr. You heard, you heard Amari, hold on. You heard Amari Cooper say what in, in Hard Knocks? <sighs> I got to get my feet. I got to get my feet. Well, what does that come from? Well, he ain't practiced in a while. And so you can sit out there with Britt Brown, and I love Britt's my guy. You can sit out there with whoever you want, Joe Blow and Susie Sant, whoever, and do all the drills you want. But until you out there and it's live bullets and you have to make split decision, uh, uh, split second decisions, that right there, that only happens with a high level of practice. It's just, and Nate, you, I'm just saying, you, you know that, Nate. Bruh, it is still, it is still, Jesse, your hand – now, don't get me wrong. Our muscles twitch without even thinking. But certain things that we do, we have to think before we do them. So the mental aspect is never going to leave. It is always going to be there. So I don't care how strong Dak is, when he get hurt, that hand or that shoulder – ah. Something go to his brain, right? So vice versa. So I understand about him the split second, but he still have to be mentally ready. He still have to be mentally ready. He still gonna have to be mentally ready. It all goes hand in hand. I'm not as intelligent as you guys, but it's still gonna have to be a mental so you, thing that he's gonna have to go you through. You saying physically he's ready, but mentally you're still. I think physically you're... he's ready, then mentally he's gonna have to get even better because he is he he's gonna for the first time gonna have to sit in practice. And, and take mental reps because of the pitch count. He's going to have to sit there and like, okay, this is what I would do on this, this, and this. You know, unless we just get rid of all of these backup quarterbacks who, you, if you put all together, can't be one backup quarterback, and well, you he'd take what? all the reps. Hopefully both of y'all are right because if Nate's right and he's – and he's because you're saying he's you think he's mentally he's ready. He's physically not so sure ready, and physical. Jesse's right, and he's right. mentally ready. I don't think he's mentally then ready. We got a ready quarterback. Physically ready. Yeah. We got a ready quarterback. Yeah. All right. You know what? Let's take a break. I want to flip it and ask you guys. Well, I, I don't want to go to the uh, physical part. I want to stay mental, and I think he want to stay. 
No, you were physical. saying he's not. He's gonna I have think to. It's he's gonna he have to fight. Physical. Yeah. Yeah. You okay, said he's you ready. You want to flip it? I don't want. No, I don't want to flip that. <laughs> okay. right. I'm flipping something else. Okay. <laughs> Does right. him me me watching practice yesterday? I realize what a huge difference it is. Does him being out and the defensive backs and the safeties and the linebackers not practicing against the number one quarterback? Mm. Does that affect them in their preparation going into this first? Mentally game? or physically? All, mm. all, all the above. Mm. Twisting, pump, I'm going with twisting, pumping, humping, and jumping. We'll be right back. I'm hanging with the boys. I knew he was waiting on that. <laughs> Honey, big news. Gary, are you okay? Oh, I'm not Gary anymore. I'm Jackie Flash. What? See, I want the latest smartphone, but the best deals are only for new customers. So to get a new customer deal, I changed my name to Jackie Flash. Okay, but the best smartphone deals at AT&T are for everyone, new and existing customers. That's huge. Then guess who's getting a deal? Is it Jackie Flash? Jackie Flash. It's not complicated. At AT AT&T, our best smartphone deals are for everyone. Restrictions apply. Visit att.com for details. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want, great, fresh-tasting, ready-to-serve guacamole for your home-gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yo Quiero, Yo Quiero Guacamole. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. How great would it be to travel to watch the Cowboys win on another team's turf? Pretty great. But honestly, just watching the game from anywhere but your house would be fun. Even a hotel bar with some guy named Phil from St. Louis who thinks Oakland still has a team. So whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com. Proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Back to Hanging with the Boys. Welcome back to the show, Twisting, Humping, Pumping, and Jumping. You're listening to Hanging with the Boys. Kurt Daniels, Jesse Holly, Nate Newton, Shannon Gross, and Kurt, yes, sir. it's coming to an end, but there's still time to get the training camp issue of the Star Magazine. Yeah, because we're you know, previewing the season, not just training camp, but the season and the scouting reports on the different players. So, yeah, we've got a few left, not many left, so pick one up. Go to DallasCowboys.com slash star and get one print or digital. Collector's item, because there's only a limited run of those there every is. year, right? Yeah, we sold out. One got uh, one batch, got a few more, put them online, and about to sell those out. All right. Well, good deal. Quickly, let me say this right here. Quickly. Mm. About your hard knocks, which I hate, but it's <laughs> part of what the Cowboys is doing right now. Hater. Yeah. I'm, hard knocks, you got me. I hate it. Okay. This is what's so funny. The coach's pet, Mike McCarthy, Danucci, the coach's pet. Mm-hmm. Was that not the perfect setup to get cut? Oh, we need for you to do this. Oh, we great, great, great. And all of a sudden, you go out and throw three interceptions. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, I hate hard knocks. Because here it is, the coach's guy who he loved, who he rap with on Why? the elevator before he drafted him. Why do you hate it? Because it it, 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 it it makes people go out of character. It makes people say things or try to be as smart or dumb as they are. You know, it's just not a good thing. You know, you uh, Is it a distraction, you think, for the players? I, I just don't like it because guys like me who on, who on on their last leg, and if I'm one of those guys you picking out to say, okay, yeah, he's going to get cut, and let's just do some uh, – nah, 10 minutes of fame to get cut, no. No. <laughs> get get cut without somebody knowing you. H- Hard Knocks thought they were going to have this fantastic storyline, and they didn't. They, they thought it was going to be more de- uh, Dak – and being able to really outline that and seeing him come back. But when he got hurt yeah. for an entire month and there was nothing that you – now you're reaching. Mm. So not, Hard Knocks have found themselves in uh, – you know, it's like when you do radio in the month of June 
when nothing's really going on, June, June and July, like right. late June and July. You got you you want to you want to hear a good radio broadcaster? Listen to him in late June and July. Right. Yeah. You'll when know the, if he's good. When football hadn't started, <laughs> basketball is over, and you're in the middle of a bad dog, a bad team, baseball, baseball team. wise. Whoa, <laughs> you're gonna find out, Eric really Nadell. Good. I'm glad you're in the Hall of Fame because you good, brother. <laughs> you are good. Because when you can make the Rangers sound good, <laughs> Eric Nadell is good, brother. All right. Question I, I posed before we went to break. Yesterday, it, it just alarm bells went off how much better Dak is than second, third, fourth string guy. <laughs> and then I was watching Dak just pick the defense apart. Boom, 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 boom. It made me think, if you're on defense, obviously you're covering your guy, right? Mm-hmm. You're, you're, which you can tell if you wrapped a guy up, even if he catches a ball, if you were in good position, and if you if, if, if it was just a hell of a throw and a hell of a catch and you couldn't. Sometimes you just can't guard that. What you I'm good on, go ahead. I'm going okay. on, just, I want to say something right quick. Go ahead. You're you, you right on target. But I think after watching yesterday's practice, it just went off to me like, are these guys – because if, if your third or fourth string guy throws it and it's not anywhere close, you're not getting in there and fighting for the ball. You're not using your body to knock a guy off a route. You're not using position because the ball's five yards away, right? Right, right, right. How big of an impact that is Dak being out going to affect your linebackers, your DBs, your safeties? Or, or is that just they get all that work in one-on-ones? Let me say this first. Okay. When you have Amari, C.D. Lamb, mm-hmm. and Gallup, those guys was working with him, right? Mm-hmm. And you have Zeke. All of a sudden, it picks up. The competition, Dak breeds competition. He wants his players in a certain place. So these guys are running routes even crisper and better because they ain't got to compensate. They know they've been working all together. Mm-hmm. So now it picks up. So – my question now, Jesse, is when you get in a game as a DB and you just got picked apart all week because of the quarterback situation, how far do they have to go to get there to understand that Tom Brady is that type of guy, that the next guy is that type of guy, mm-hmm. that these receivers are those type of guys, not, not like our receivers. Our receivers are a different level. So I'm saying to myself, as the offensive line, it don't take us long because we boom, 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 and we getting snotty and bloody quick. Mm-hmm. But as receiver versus, and you see quality versus just quantity. Our defense to me is quantity. Our offense is quality. How the, and, and just real quick, yeah. C- CD wasn't out there because he's in protocol. It, it don't and matter. I don't think I saw Gallup yesterday. Did he practice? Maybe he was out there and I just didn't see him. I, he but threw a lot. All of, five of those guys yeah. are, are good when it comes to that. So, Nate, it's biblical. <laughs> biblical. Wow. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's, it's biblical. I can't, right. I can't wait for this. Oh, yeah. yeah, preach. All right. Proverbs 27, 17 says <laughs> what? Iron sharpens iron. That's right. So the only way that my top guys get better is by going up against – Top guys. Mm-hmm. When you don't have Dak in the mix, and you heard even Mike McCarthy talk about it, he talked about being able to go full playbook with Cooper Rush, with Garrett Gilbert, with these other guys. Mm-hmm. So if he can't go full playbook, then our defense isn't getting the quite of a great the, the, the quality yeah. of a great look that they necessarily will need when they face. Mr. Seven Rings, September 9th. Right, right. When Dak is out there, there's a different level. And you know this, Nate. When Troy was under center, when Troy was in the huddle, opposed to when Jason Garrett was in the huddle, it hit different. When Dak is in the huddle, the command is different. Now I have the I have the limitless possibility to call whatever it is. When I used to get into the huddle with Tony, opposed to getting into the huddle with with, um, what's his name? Steve <laughs> uh, from A and M. Oh, yeah. Steve McGee. McGee. Steve McGee. McGee. Mm-hmm. I ran routes differently because I knew. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I knew what Steve. I knew he wasn't gonna throw it. Like, you got a you got a twenty yard dig. Steve ain't throwing this twenty yard. I'm gonna run it, but I ain't gonna run it with the anticipation that the ball might come. 
even though the coverage says that the ball should come here. When Tony was in there, I knew Tony understood and saw the same things that I saw. And those type of quarterbacks, I'm going to where the ball is supposed to go. Mm-hmm. And even when it ain't supposed to go there, I got so much trust in 19 and 88 and 13 and 21, I'm still going to throw it because I believe my man's a little bit better than your man. Now, how does that affect our defense? We got a guy in Kelvin Joseph. We got a guy in, in Trey, like his son say, <laughs> who still need reps. They still need reps. We, we don't have, a, you know, Anthony Brown still needs reps. Jordan Lewis still needs reps. There's a ton of guys defensively that still need the quality reps. And what you get is you get a false sense of security when you have a Cooper Rush, when you have a, a, a Garrett Gilbert throwing majority of the balls in practice. Because what, what seems like now, oh, I got this, because the dude back there is 300000 mm-hmm. opposed to when the dude who $40 million, those <laughs> throws are a little bit different. The timing is different. The accuracy is different. The anticipation is different. Now you're on your P's and Q's always because I'm going to throw it in there. And Amari knows that. And, and, and Coop, knows, um, Coop knows that. And, and CD knows. And uh, so our defense, to your point, isn't getting the qu- – even our young linebackers. When that comes on the screen, oh, 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 check, 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 check. Roger, 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 Roger. Louie, 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 Louie. Kill, 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 kill. And he says it with a level of confidence because I've seen that look. I know what that look is. I, I know where to go with the ball. I know where to go with the football. I know where we're supposed to go. I know what, how to make us right, even though the play call might have put us in a bad situation. Now, that makes the defense a little bit more now. Like, oh, dang, I got to disguise that more because that called me out on that. And he picked me apart on that. Mm-hmm. You don't get that when you're dealing with the second and third string guy. Those guys, they just trying to survive. Yeah. They just trying to survive. They, they, ain't trying to, uh, about, they ain't trying to screw it up. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and once again, that's why I hate hard knocks because all I see is negative. <clears throat> the first interception when they went to coach McCarthy, he didn't say, God, offensive line. He didn't say, God, Lee, uh, Lyle. He said, Gilbert, Gilbert. Because everybody in the stadium knew you dropped back, you scanned, you shuffled up, you looked around again, and you gave up a four-second sack. How you got a running back standing over there, and you got guys crossing wide open in front of you. Mm. Yeah. So, so is the uh, Dak ain't the, holding the ball like that, bro. With the obviously the receivers, defensive backs, it's a big difference when the quarterback in, is in there. It is it what is it for linemen? I mean, is it, are you same thing? It's, same thing. It's a false sense hey, of LC, security. LC looked around like ball that, should be gone. That yeah. dude ran. The, he ran the hump. <laughs> the dude ran the hump. He with him. He took three, four extra steps with him on one hand, and the dude still got a sack. And LC like, okay, I gave up the sack, but wow. Yeah. Four seconds, and you can't make up your mind? So it affects the offensive line, Yes, too. sir. Timing and things like Everything, that, Everything, right? man. Everything. Because mm. everybody, everybody, there's an internal clock in everybody's head. Mm-hmm. And everybody said, you know, as a lineman, as a running back, as a receiver, as a tight end, you know you know what the route concept is. You, when Nate was blocking, I'm blocking, blocking, blocking. It gets to a certain point in time. He like, man, shoot, that ball should be going, or somebody <laughs> should be running. Yeah. <laughs> now I got to find something maybe downfield. <laughs> right. But if you're still chasing it, and, and all of a sudden now, he 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 turn him loose and look for some other work somewhere else, and you still in the pocket, and ain't throwing the ball yet. Yeah, it's gonna look bad on me. Oh, Nate Newton's man beat yeah. him off the edge. Oh, he got the uh, let the ball go, son. <laughs> Throw it in the stands. We literally see another down. And I, I I tell you what it's it's even it even comes down like if you haven't noticed I'm not a football player right believe it or not I don't suit up in practice with those guys <laughs> but I could even tell the little nuances like I could anticipate the snap count with Gilbert and Rush they get down <laughs> they had a certain cadence they would they would look yeah. they would do this and I could be like because I'm filming with my phone I could be like I know exactly when to start it boom that's when the that, Dak gets up there, it's different. Yeah. He gets down, he stops, he stands up, he backs up. He he points, he moves, yeah. he gets back down, and he might stand back up or he might just go real quick. Like Even little bitty things that most people don't pick up on, Like that's even different. I mean, so just something that popped in my head. And that's why, I, that's why Nate and I both harp so much about him practicing. 
Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Because all those little things added together. That's what I'm saying. The whole, the whole team. And, and when you do, and, and again, Dak may go out there, and I'll use practice yesterday for example. He was 11 of 12, and everything went right. But who's to say, in a tight game, that that 11th play, the one you need, is the one that you need, mm-hmm. the one that you missed, yeah. the one that you missed in practice because of whatever it, you know. Somebody missed something somewhere. And it happens. I'm not, it happens. I know people say, well, it happens to Aaron Rodgers. And it does. It happens to Tom Brady. And it does. But that's the thing that you want to eliminate. That's the thing that you want to take out of the equation. The mess ups from. You have some unavoidable things that'll happen, but there's something that you can avoid happening. And when you're able to eliminate those from repetition, and that's what Dak has. He has he has a, a, a wealth of repetition. That's why he can get in there and be so comfortable. The other guy, they're just like, we ain't going on two. We ain't going on three. We just we, it's gonna be set hut. Let's let's because their minds are just focused on let let me just get the play off. Mm-hmm. I just want a positive play. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to go right for me right here. I, I don't have the knowledge or the time or even the confidence to do all this other. Jazz that you see Dak doing. Mm-hmm. And that's why I harp so much on practice. Not a game. Now, I ain't talking about a game. Pra- no, we talking no, about no, practice. No, we're talking about practice. We're talking about practice. <laughs> but, yeah. All right. Let's take our last break. When we come back, let's talk about – this is the last week before cuts. Cuts are what, Tuesday at 4 p.m. Right. Central time? Yeah. Is that correct? I think that's right. So, who do we who do we see kind of on the bubble? And you guys have both – you guys have lived on the bubble. Lived I on did. the bubble, and Nate, you were lived on the bubble in the beginning of your career. What was that week like? And can you do anything as a player in this game, or are the, all the decisions already made for these guys? Twisting, turning, pumping, jumping, and gooching. Let's go. (laughs) Hang it with the boys. We'll be right back. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want, great, fresh-tasting, ready-to-serve guacamole for your home-gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yo Quiero, Yo Quiero Guacamole. Honey, big news. Gary, are you okay? Oh, I'm not Gary anymore. I'm Jackie Flash. What? See, I want the latest smartphone, but the best deals are only for new customers. So to get a new customer deal, I changed my name to Jackie Flash. Okay, but the best smartphone deals at AT AT&T are for everyone, new and existing customers. That's huge. Then guess who's getting a deal? Is it Jackie Flash? Jackie Flash. It's not complicated. At AT AT&T, our best smartphone deals are for everyone. Restrictions apply. Visit att.com for details. It's game day. You know what that means. First, kebab prep. Steak, pepper, onion, steak, pepper, onion. Next, a counterclockwise lap around the room. Now, the lucky grease-stained jersey goes on. And lastly, the dance. You know the one. This is a game day ritual no matter where you are. Whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com and keep the tradition alive and well. Hotels.com, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Hi, I'm Clint Tillerson with United Ag and Turf. When there's work to be done, a real workhorse can make all the difference. Like the Range Boss Package. Our 5075E John Deere 75 horsepower tractor features a bell spear and loader and starts at $369 per month. And the price you see is the price you'll pay. No surprises. It works like a horse, so you don't have to. Visit unitedagandturf.com. Offer ends February 1st, 2021. Restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Now, let's get to work. Back to Hanging with the Boys. Welcome back to the SWBC Mortgage Studio. Live inside the star in Frisco. Kurt Daniels, Jesse Holly. Shannon Gross, Nate Newton, and we are twisting, humping, jumping, and pumping yeah. here on the show to close it out and come out here to training camp. What's today, Thursday? 
Thursday. Yes, sir. It all just runs together now. The, the season's here, man. August 26th. So come out the 27th, which is Friday, which is tomorrow and Saturday, to watch practice inside Ford Center at the Star. It'll be the last two times you can you can do that. Admission and parking are free. Visit the thestarinfrisco.com for details. Come see it for the last time. We don't have open practices during the season at all, do we? Ever. No, I don't think so. No. One and all, all in one. Come on. That'd Just come no. on. Come on. That'd be a no, says Chris. All right. Before we get into you, y- y'all's experience as players, <laughs> give Did us – that you two? What's that? You supposed to say you two? He's about to say ours. He's about to say ours. <laughs> yeah, ours. <laughs> you, you, know, guys. you know, we are together, so it is ours. Okay. Yeah. So Our experience as <laughs> yeah. players. Uh, by the way, <laughs> since we're going to talk about bubble guys and rookies, you, your guy – uh, Bo Hanna, he's looking good, man. I, he he had he's boring up, dude. Ain't he had a great up. great practice yesterday when they were doing yes, one on ones. He looked really good. And Jabril Cox, just the quiet, it's just, the quiet assassin, it's like, just moving up that depth chart. Didn't I tell y'all? He like remember when I asked Will? I said, Will, I'm sorry. No, you I said, I said, Will, what are you gonna do when you when you not let these veterans play? And they remember that, mm-hmm. and, and the Jabril Cox of the world start moving up mm-hmm. because they are showing you, even though it's preseason, that they can adapt and, and learn your system. What do you do then? And you drafted them. Well, 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 well we're gonna kind of have to play them. I said, be careful now, because <laughs> these guys. That's You're when starting the go- to move up, man. That's when, as Will McClay, that's when the Gooch get the jumping. Yeah, <laughs> as, as a scout, as a head scout, jumping Gooch. That's when the Gooch. You start seeing the guys that you just scouted start yeah. to take over. Yeah, that Gooch get especially, the jumping, especially a guy you got in the third round what about that the guys, you didn't I think mean, you were going to get. The other guys you scouted and drafted too. That's old news, baby. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, I'm gonna tell you. You're something. You're only good as your last draft class, <laughs> baby. I'm, I'm gonna tell you something. When you let the scouts do the work. Then you then it you get together a scout and you do all the groundwork, but you have the least amount of say when a coach say, I like him. Well, we're gonna let the coach make the decision. But no, this scout knows some things and have researched some things. Well, how about going with the scout for a change? That's tough. Hmm. And, and and the reason why that's tough, and, and it's 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 a it's a double edged sword. Right, because everybody's supposed to do a job. It's like I'm supposed to have a relationship with said coach. Like right. this year, the Cowboys were heavy on defense, mm-hmm. so I'm going to jump out of the window and say that there were plenty of conversations between Will McClay and DQ Dan yeah. Quinn. Yeah, right. Yeah. And Dan Quinn saying, "All right, Will, here's what I'm looking for. I want him fat." I want them greasy. Mm-hmm. I want them loggy. Right. I want them tall. Right. Rangy. Right. Long arms. Will takes that information, takes it back to his lab. He gets with his his counterparts and say, "All right, here's what Coach wants: fat, greasy, long. loggy, yeah. long, right. long. Uh, all right? right, I want that." Dee, 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 dee. Here you go. Here's your <laughs> list. And they put that into an equation, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then they send these guys out all across the nation. To find said players. Right. Now, once I bring you what you asked for, you then can't tell the coach who to play. Not who to play, mm. but I'm talking who to pick. Or, or, or who to pick. Or which one's to pick. Because, because but, I brought you no, no, no. Bohannon. Will's, Will's who, job, Will's job is to basically bring you Bohannon. Bring you the groceries. Bring you Hamilton. Yeah. Bring you these guys. Right. But if all of these guys are what you told me to go get, then I don't have an issue with that. But it was you that said do the complete scouting job where we did with Tristan Hill. And then you got Tristan Hill versus another guy. And Tristan Hill, has his history does not agree with what you're trying to present. No, nah, you know, you, nah. The scout yeah, man knows then? something. What, yeah, when the scout says, nah, you might want this big – Greasy guy, but this is the this issue is behind the, this. Yeah. But this is the issue. Then you wind up with Taco Charlton. Just a little tease. Tonight they're airing War Rooms, right? 
Six right. o'clock, right. Deep Blue War Room. You don't want to watch that. That's I think I think good. that is a perfect example of what happens is that the, the football collective minds get in this room, and you're going to have some that's on this side of the table, some that's on that side of the table, and they say, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. And at the end of the day, you just hope that you are able to put together enough of the great minds. Because, Nate, if I'm Will, and I bring you this guy. He brought you, Bohan. Right. I done my job. Okay, and that's because, what I'm saying. Because if if if, if that, Will was going to bring the you the guy page. and coach the guy, physical and mental, here we go he again. Should, and he should have been the defensive <laughs> coordinator. Physical and mental, it all goes together. It all. This is what I'm saying. Is Taco Charlton for as good as he looked and as nice as he dressed? I to, I was working at the other enemy radio station. I can't call their numbers because they're not our flagship. Soon as we, I heard that, and I said, okay, Nate, what do you think about it? I told you what I thought about him. He had to learn. It took him four years to be a football player in Michigan. I don't know about his speed. And I'm telling these folks this on radio. And the first thing when Will McClay got up there and said in front of all of the world, where is more ways to rush the passer than with speed? Ain't that the number one thing? <laughs> But some coach wanted this. Oh, we we need the run stopper. We don't need the kid with Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, all but, he do but, is rush the pass. But Will can't get up here and say. But real. I, but Will wanted that guy. So we but can't. No, sit, no, no. I, if my understanding on Taco Charlton, that was more of a coach's pick. That, right. That's what he said. That's what he said. Uh, <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. So you can't let a coach pick your first round pick. Who's who's a. Who's a GQ design dresser and not a pass <laughs> but rusher? But that's the way the cookie crumbles at times. For the first time ever, I'm going to ask you to back away from the mic a little bit. But like that—that's the way the cookie <laughs> crumbles sometimes. It, it, it breaks down to it where, and Will has to get up there man, and I'm save just gonna face. Go, I'm gonna go out there with that dude, man, and just walk. But Will has song. to Will has to save face for the organization and say, you know, hey, there's more. One okay, way I, under, I understood that. Because that. Will can't get up there and be like. I didn't want that sorry mother anyway. Whoa. I thought wow, that was close. That. You know what I'm saying? Like, close. Bill can't close. say that. That wasn't my God to hell with No, him. I, I'm not saying that I understand the etiquette. Is that pronounced right? Etiquette, mm-hmm. Of, of how to handle it. You know, even when even the, the next, once I said that on air, when I got over here the next day, we did it. What do you think about Taco? And I repeated what Will said. Well, there's more than one way to rush the passer. <laughs> I repeated it. I'm all about the Cowboys. But do not. Like, like, like Armstrong, the next year we went and got Armstrong. I'm like, this dude can rush the passer. And I saw in college where they, where they changed the defense and asked this kid to do something else. This kid is going to be a great rotation player for us because now we got coaches that realize that boom, boom, he's got to go. They show the kid on hard knocks, uh, number 93, where, where, where D-Law is begging him, man, use your speed. He never used it. You saw him just jog off the ball. He never cut loose and used his speed. Oh, so were, were... I, I'm with you, Jess. I'm with you. But when, a, when, a, when you tell a scout, I want long, athletic, rangy guys, and they go get that, you know, I develop them. tell you what. Let's just because I want to get to this. Let's 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 move a little bit to one. Give me go around go around the horn. Give me one guy that you're going to be interested interested to see if he makes the team or not. That you think is a bubble guy that could or could not make the team. Ooh. This is crazy. What I'm saying, Ty and Sinky. Mm-hmm. In second, in second. In second. In I'm not changing because I got to do a show. Ty and Sinky, that's who I'm calling it, and that's what I'm sticking to. So I won't stumble up and mess up my show. Then that I got to do next. Okay. So even that, if I'm wrong, that dude, yeah, even if I'm wrong, Cowboy have been wrong before. Uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like that. <laughs> so Ty, this guy is the pettiest guy ever. <laughs> <laughs> No, let me say this right here. Because between him and Terrence Steele, we got to find a swing tackle. And we can't have two bad guys. Right. You know, we we don't know who the backup center is. You know, it, 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 it's Williams, but that's – He's out now. Yeah, with COVID. Who's your guy? He need all the snaps. Who's your guy? Um, For bubble guy? Yeah. Who are you going to be interested to see if they make it or not? I'm going to see – I'm going to – because I started and having a relationship with him early in, in this his process, 
Simi Fahoku. That's my guy. Because he was running with the ones yesterday. That's really? that's one of Talking the Talking about the wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 81. 81. Yep. And he they did ju- some nice things in camp. They drafted him, and I know they like him, yeah. but it, that, that, that room is crowded, man. Mm-hmm. That room is real crowded. I don't know what kind of special teams guy he is, but I have a feeling. I've been, I have I've a been, feeling I've been trying to text him and tell him, Homie, you got to you got to do something. You got to bang on it. You got to bang on the st- right, you that's going to fossil. That's going to be that after Kurt gets done. That's going to be my next question. Kurt, who's your, who's your guy? You cheated. You looked at the roster. Well, I, could, I was trying to remember guys. Um, well, I, I think it's, they're now in an interesting position because Dowdle, the third running back's out for the year. Are they mm-hmm. going to keep a third running back or a fullback or a fullback? Is Ralston done enough to? Can he help on special mm, teams? Ralston. That kind of thing. So, Plano, um, Plano guy, right? Argyle, Argyle, Argyle. Mm-hmm. So, um, or you know that you. They featured Jaquan Hardy in the last Hard Knocks. You hope you saw that, Nate. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Got his his thing knocked out. <laughs> yeah, the Rex Specs. Yeah, I mean, see, he's, see, a he's a he showed guy. he showed why he was a free agent. They he falls he, he falls on the ground. His contacts come out. That's why, uh, it, it, man. <laughs> to me, I got so. That's when I got pissed off. Was <laughs> Skip asking son? Well, coach, I, I didn't want to come out of the game. I love the game so much to when they threw me the pass, I couldn't see the ball. Okay, you wonder why they didn't draft you. <laughs> <laughs> My wife like, oh, that's too bad. I'm like, see, this is, is a candidate to be cut. I, I just don't like that, man. It made him look like a dummy to me. See, that that makes me mad. Like, mm. what do you what do you think about the other guy that featured the, the Aller Aller Scalacon? The you talking about the Mexico? number sixty? Look, we have spent Mexico? way too much time he, on hard knocks. Okay, this is I'm not sorry. a hard who knocks you, recap show. Who are you? Uh, See me. I just said it. thanks okay. for listening, Kurt. Okay, moving on to the next subject. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. I mean, you brought it up. The next topic. Can guys do anything? You guys have both been there. Can you do anything in this last game to make this team? Do you not or, know Jesse's or, career? Or are the decisions, are they already made? No. What can the guys do? For the people that aren't familiar, you, you, can, pick up any two, you can pick up an 82-yard punt and take it back for a touchdown and win a game. So they, You can have four special teams tackles and then pick up a punt and run it back 82 yards for a touchdown. And make the team. And, and then have three catches for 27 yards and make a football team. <laughs> At least make yeah. the practice squad. This, this thing's this whole week for these guys. Does it ramp up some, or does it get a little chippy? I mean, how are they? Do you get more edge, or are they nervous? I mean, you want to go into this last week with a positive, with positive affirmation and positive words attached to your name every single time a coach goes into a meeting, because you don't know what's on that. Like, yeah, we know Dak, Zeke, we know those guys, mm-hmm. right? That those. Get them off the board. They're they're done. But when they go into that meeting, I want nothing but positive things, and I'm hoping that I've earned, we used this word before, in the last six months, a sponsor. And that comes to Mm -hmm. attitude, habits, being around the facility, are you a team guy, personality, all that stuff, And I'm not bringing up hard knocks, but hard knocks showed you when they they go into a meeting. (laughs) I'm not bringing it up. (laughs) But But I'm saying it it showed you when you go into a meeting, who's all in the meetings? Mm -hmm. Everybody. Scouts, coaches. Scouts, coaches, uh, trainers, equipment, doctors. So when your name comes up. You want somebody saying. You want Britt Brown to say, man, you know what? I know he was hurt early in the training camp, but this dude showed up every single morning, 7 o'clock on the dot. He trained his butt off to get back on that field. And then you want the weight coach to be like, man, shoot, he got an offseason workout award. His leadership was crazy this offseason. Then you want your physical coach to say, man, you know what? He might have had some days where it didn't look like it, but I promise you he showed up every single meeting. He was attentive. He asked questions. After practice, he was working. Like, you want – a list of people to say your name in a positive manner as much as they possibly can so that when you get to that moment that they say Why are you laughing, Nate? <laughs> because the coach will say, I understand what you said. We're at practice squad. <laughs> 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 I'm telling you, that's what they go say. You know, 106,000 to be on practice squad. Just yeah, FYI, fellas. They said around 140 now. <laughs> Even more. Sign what, me what? up. I mean, Sign me my, up. Your first couple years in the league, you were, I mean, you were cut. One yeah, I got cut, I mean, and then I went to the USFL, week? and then I came back and made it. This, this is the thing about it. It's when what you can't do on a consistent basis, and that's what I didn't like what they did with, the, with that kid you're talking about, the running back. Okay, his contact came out. Okay, his enthusiasm for the game, okay, it overshadowed his smarts. But then the next 
four clips, they show him dropping the ball, and the coach asks him, can you catch, you know, you, that right there is killing you. That ain't helping you. That's killing you because you heard Skip say, if I'm the quarterback, I ain't throwing you the ball no more. So when they go into that meeting, guess what the quarterback coach said? Well, we throw him the ball three or four times. Well, I mean, that's on him. That's on the kid. Like, that, you but, dropped but, that, that. That's what I'm saying is I'm agreeing what you're saying is somebody got to have confidence in you. And and you got to – when somebody shows that confidence, like, like a coach came to me, Jim Erkenbeck, you know, I was on the bubble. Jim Erkenbeck, I was a starter, but I kind of was on the bubble with Coach, coach Landry. Jim Erkenbeck comes in and said, look here, man, this guy can play. Let me get him through the preseason. Let me get him going. Let me get him some confidence. So you had a sponsor. Yeah. Come on, man. The same thing I did. I had Jody Camillus. Yeah, you got to yeah. have one. Jody Camillus was always saying, like, like Jody Camillus would be screaming in practice. This is the guy that you wanted to cut. This is what he would be saying. Yeah, I, I have a feeling Joe didn't say it in the, those exact words because Joe Joe like he to would, he had colorful things. language. <laughs> yeah, but he would he would come to me just like just like your, your coach and he'd be like, "Listen, here's what I need from you today." Yeah, listen, l- listen, hear me, hear me out. Go break, go, go go. When we get to this period, I need you disruptive as hell. Like I need you to tear some stuff up. And he's like, "Trust me." Because now when he went in the meeting, he can go, look. Oh, look. Yeah. <laughs> look, this we started. He do, he do this naturally. I ain't mad to even talk to him. <laughs> right. You know, I'm serious. You know what I'm saying? And, and then when I got called up, it was the same thing. He called me the night, the night before I got called up. He called me and just simply said to me, You ready? I'm like, What? He's like, I'll see you in the morning. Yeah, I get in the morning, nice. I'm up. Hmm. And yeah. he's like, I'm telling you, man. Don't don't, don't make me wrong. Hmm. And so having a guy like that on your tw- on your team, and again, I was always a guy who was on time. I showed up. I practiced hard every single day. I gave great looks. But it doesn't hurt not one bit to have a guy in that meeting room who got a little bit of say-so. And, you know, my guy was a special teams guy, so he was head of that department. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To guy I'm like, hey, now, we, what are we at, number 48? I got a guy. We, I know we, we rounded this roster off. I got a guy. Nice. All right, real quick well, to close out, <clears throat> to close out the show. I have a question, an observation from the last two days of practice. It was ninety three when they started practicing yesterday. It was ninety one the the practice before, and we're situated now in between two really tall glass buildings. Out there. And so you're getting sun from above, behind, and in front of you, and it's probably ten extra degrees on that field than it is. Everywhere else, and then there's astroturf up against that other <laughs> building, half of it, and then it turns to the grass field. And if you're close to that astroturf, it's probably another 15 degrees over there. <laughs> so it's probably well over 100 on that field. And did you wear a, did you wear a hoodie whenever you used I wore long sleeves all the time? Yeah, my my theory is because there's several guys that wear sweatpants. Mm-hmm. I think Zeke had two sweatshirts on. A lot of guys wear hoodies is it a conditioning thing or is it a pride thing like when the guy when it's 15 degrees and the guys walk out without sleeves on it's like it's hot i'm gonna make it hotter because i'm a man i'm the alpha i'm gonna sweat or is it a conditioning thing or is it just a preference for the fat guys it's probably a lose weight thing right a lose Mm -hmm. weight thing Mm -hmm. but actually or fashion no when you cover first of all when you cover up you'll be amazed when you cover up, you're actually cooler. Because the sweat and then it'll, the wind. Because the sun is not like beating, beating on, on your you. skin. Mm-hmm. Skin cancer is real too, fellas. Yeah. But when you watch most of the guys, like when you look at like but a hoodie, cons- construction guys. But a hoodie. Construction guys long always sleeve have yeah, long, long sleeves long on. Sleeve. Yeah, yeah, but not a hoodie. But it's not a like sweatshirt. Yeah, but the, the thing like with Zeke, Zeke doesn't get many reps in practice. Mm. So he's trying to get a good sweat. And then you want to get a good sweat. Like, that's the one thing about when you start practicing. Once I get that good sweat, I get lathered up, I'm, I'm, more, I'm loose. <laughs> lathered up. I'm loose. My gooch is loose. <laughs> I knew that would come. <laughs> ready, when I, when ready. I, my gooch get loose, I can, I can flow better. Ready to do some twisting, pumping, and jumping once yeah. you get lathered once up. Once you get lathered up, that twisting, humping, pumping, and jumping. 
<laughs> well, that's an ender, Kurt. Let well, that gooch fly. Good for being here. Good. Thanks for being here, Jesse. Thanks for bringing it, Nate. Thanks for being here today. It was good to have you back, Chris. Thanks for keeping us on the air, William. Thanks for keeping the live streams up. We will be back when we on the air again. Monday. Monday, isn't it? Oh, so we back to Monday too. Monday. We'll Wednesday. be Monday, Wednesday, Friday next week. Oh, we coming up on y'all, y'all. You know who I'm talking about. We, we got coming time. Up on we got time. Specific time. Yeah. Uh, I think it's still nine thirty. Nine thirty. Nine thirty. Nine thirty. They don't want that. They don't want that. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Football game this we Sunday. On, we on your tail. We, we on yeah. that. <laughs> we on that. We gooching up. Up on you. We <laughs> gooching up on you, baby. <laughs> First show to recap the game on Monday. Oh, man. We'll be yeah. back Monday, 930, twisting, humping, pumping, jumping. This has been <laughs> Hanging with the Boys. Hard See ya. knocks! See ya. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about-